The prompt assessment of a patient with stroke is vital, and the old saying, time is brain, is really important, as the quicker that they're identified from onset of symptoms, the quicker they can be brought to the hospital and have the definitive treatment. Stroke has been popularised in the media recently, and what we've seen is a handy algorithm to use, which is the FAST test. But in this presentation, we're going to look at also another test that you could potentially use in clinical practice. Stroke assessment is normally region specific, and that depends on the type of test that you're encouraged to use. There's two tests that are out there that are relatively simple to use. The first one is the FAST test, typically used by the Yorkshire Ambulance Service, but there's also the BFAST test, and this was a test that I used in clinical practice and that I know that the Lincolnshire Ambulance Service are also using. The FAST test is well known in that we assess the patient's face, arms, speech, and the time implication of getting them to hospital, taking emphasis on the quicker route trying to get them to the stroke centre as quickly as possible. It's important when you're assessing a patient's face that you're looking for any potential droops. A way to do this on the lower face is to ask the patient to smile or grin and bare their teeth, but also take into account that the stroke could affect affected their forehead and asking the patient to raise or lower their eyebrows will help you identify this motor deficit. Also be aware that a stroke can act purely sensory as well and it's important to touch the patient's face on both sides and ask if they can feel you and this will help you falling into the trap that they may still have a motor ability, but the sensor ability has been taken out by the stroke. This goes for the same for their arms, and typically what we ask the patient to do is to raise their arms above the head and see if they can maintain that. But also be aware that there might be a sensory deficit here, and examining the patient in terms of the sensory of the arms is quite simple, in that as you go along the dermatomes, the same as the face, ask the patient if they can feel you. Speech is reasonably easy to assess. What we need to look for is if the patient can actually speak, but also be aware that the stroke could be affecting them from a comprehension of speech as well. So make sure that they can actually understand you and they're not confused. And finally, it's time to get the patient into hospital if any of these symptoms are there. The next test, and a test that I quite like, is the BFAST test. It has a simple addition of balance and eyes, and this is quite important. In some patients, it'll affect their balance cortex, of the brain and what you'll find is that these patients once you get them up feel quite dizzy and are able to stand up but also balance can be affected by a lack of sensation in the lower limbs as well so it's a good idea to get your patient up to see if they can walk as you could potentially miss this stroke presentation and finally eyes as well it's important to ask the patient if they've got any problems with their sense of vision but also to examine the visual fields at the same time this will help you identify any problems with the visual fields, and therefore the potential stroke. Face, arms, speech and time are all the same. As with clinical examinations, they all have a sensitivity and specificity attached to them. If we take a look at the FAST test, the sensitivity is 85%. So it'll pick up 85 strokes out of 100. The specificity though is not great. It's 68% specific for stroke. And what that means is that the FAST test could be positive, but not specific for a stroke. For example, you could have somebody with a lower motor neuron disease, such as a Bell's palsy, which could come up as positive within the FAST test, but not actually a stroke. If we take a look at the BFAST test, because we have the addition of the balance and eyes, the sensitivity for picking up a stroke is actually higher than the FAST test. The trade-off here is that it's not specific, and you might have somebody who's got a balance defect unrelated to a stroke, or a visual field abnormality related to perhaps a cataract, or a lower motor neuron lesion that would be picked up by this test and would be assumed to be a stroke. There are trade-offs for both, but I think to be sure of a stroke, and as you'll see in the clinical classifications later on, BFAST is as good as some strokes present with purely a visual field defect. So far in this presentation, we've looked at the background of stroke and the different types of stroke that we can have, either ischemic or hemorrhagic. And we've also looked at the FAST or BFAST tests. Next, I'd like you to head to the discussion board and tell me about a stroke that you've seen in clinical practice. Do you think it was ischemic or hemorrhagic and why? And what were some of the signs and history points that you picked up with? And did you use the FAST or the BFAST? And later on, we'll go on to classify these strokes in terms of the area of the brain that they've affected.